it's Brian, and welcome to my new series. It's called My Favorite Guitar Records. Today, this is episode four, and we are doing Led Zeppelin. And like I say in all the previous videos, the only caveat to some of these is it's what I actually have a physical copy of to be on my list. Some are in, you know, my number one through number five, whatever, or five to one. And some, like this one, uh, I may name my number one, but the rest may be just my favorites. And like I said, uh, with Led Zeppelin, with a catalog of basically nine to ten records, depending on how you look at it, um, there's not a lot to choose from if you're doing a top five. But I definitely have my favorites. Uh, hopefully you'll share yours with me. Maybe it's just your number one recording by them. Uh, and I might kind of relate some, you know, stories from my past with the records and all of that. Um, I've been a listener for a long time. I'm 57. So, you know, I was not the biggest Led Zeppelin fan, but I, uh, definitely, uh, listen to certain records quite a bit and still do. So let's just kind of start with some of my favorites i'll leave my number one i do have a number one but i'll we'll talk about the rest first um of course we have houses of the holy uh so many great songs on it i i have to say the one i don't necessarily love the most is the song remains the same but we have the amazing rain song uh the grunge or crunge however you pronounce that dancing days i love dire maker uh no quarter is one of my favorites uh, and the ocean. So just an incredible record. And talking about Jimmy Page and this band, um, I often talk about, for me, the most cornerstone bands uh, for me in rock music uh, are these really creative bands like uh, Led Zeppelin. I always talk about them, Black Sabbath, uh, King Crimson. But I guess I think I would narrow it down to two, and that's Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. And I always think about if one of them was not present in the forming of that band, they would probably, it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have happened. So I always think about Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath like that. So uh, another great Led Zeppelin record. Uh, and again, this is what I have. So this might not be in my top five, but here you have it. Uh, of course, we have Presents. And we have Achilles' Last Stand. That's an incredible song. Um, Nobody's Fault But Mine. An incredible piece of music. I love that. And uh, some other stuff that isn't as good. But kind of a cool record. Um, I like it slightly better than In Through the Outdoor, which I do have a copy of that. So that would have been in here if I didn't have presents. But the two or three songs that are on presents that are good are, to me, are like some of their best. So, um, And... We'll move on to three. Um, you know, I don't really care for the first two a lot. There's some great pieces on it. I love um, uh, Communication Breakdown and a few of those and um, a few other pieces on there. But anyway, uh, it kind of, for me, it starts at three and four has some great stuff on it as well. But again, um, I'm throwing this in. Uh, Immigrant Song iconic song incredibly cool song there's some great talk about how it was you know some of the echoes in the song were from a previous take or something like that kind of some cool stuff uh vocally speaking so friends celebration day meh, that's okay uh since i've been loving you an incredible great blues ballad lots of cool changes great guitar playing out on the tiles of course gal's poles a big hit for me tangerine Incredible. That's the way. I love that song. Uh, Brownie or Stomp, for some reason, I blank out on that. And uh, hats off to Roy Harper. Um, are, I think, acoustic pieces, if I remember correctly. I always kind of skip those. So not my perfect Led Zeppelin album, but pretty damn close. Uh, and for lack of, you know, it's not new material, but I really, really enjoyed this one. Um the one caveat, it's like, I thought it was an incredible performance and they have such a cool uh, um, set list. The only thing that bugs me out, bugs me about it, is that Jimmy Page's guitar has like this kind of flanging, chorusing thing on a lot of it. And um, if you know what I'm talking about, please chime in. Um, and it just takes away from it because it's such a great performance and 
that here I'm playing live again and all of that, uh, although this was 2007, so we're talking about quite a few years ago, almost 20 years ago, uh, they were playing incredibly well, and um, I really, really enjoy it. The set list, you know, um, In My Time of Dying, Trampled Underfoot, Nobody's Fault But Mine, No Quarter, all those are incredible. Since I've been loving you, Dazed and Confused was the one I was trying to think of from the first or second album that I really love. Stairwood Avon, eh, you know, Song Remains the Same, that's kind of fun. Cashmere, of course. Uh, rock and Roll, I could never hear that song again and be okay. Good time, Good Times, Bad Times, I think that's what I, I really like that song quite a bit. Ramble On, cool. Black Dog is another one, almost like Rock and Roll, like I've just heard it so many times that... I could do without it, but it's such a cool, unique guitar piece, you know, like the riff and all of that are are really cool and kind of tricky to play. Um, so yeah, in my time of dying, uh, again, it's, this is off the DVD, I guess. So the DVD is culminated from, you know, the best of it. Um, it's been a while since I've watched this, but I'm going to watch it again. Really love it. Like I said, the only exception is kind of that, uh, kind of phasing or uh, flanging on the guitar that was seemed to be in my mind on every song. And I was like, cool, it's great on a few songs, but they just seemed to, you know, permeate the thing, the whole record and the DVD. So I need to watch it again. And I have to say my all-time favorite Led Zeppelin record is Physical Graffiti. I think there's maybe two songs that I just skip and maybe more because I've been listening to this is the one uh, along with uh, uh, Houses of the Holy that since I've been 12 or whatever I've listened to a million times so but this one as I was growing past some of that stuff I kind of this was the first one I personally listened to my parents listened to uh, Song Remains the Same and Houses of the Holy and all of that a lot. So I heard it and I knew it. But this is the first one I kind of claimed as like my favorite Led Zeppelin record. And it still is to this day. I mean, we have Custard Pie, The Rover, In My Time of Dying. I love that song. Houses of the Holy, Trampled Underfoot, Cashmere. I still love that song, even though it's been, you know, I heard it a million times. In the Light, I really like that. Brownie or Stomp, I, I think... If it's it's another acoustic thing, I dig that. Down by the Seaside's kind of a weird ballad, but I I kind of dig that. Ten Years Gone, Night Flight, the Wonton song, all of those are great. Uh, Boogie with Stu, I could never, I wish they would have just taken that off. Black Country Woman, I'm kind of blanking on because that's probably one I skip quite a bit. And then Sick Again, I love that. So, uh, my favorite Led Zeppelin record. Uh and, and I'll speak to his guitar playing. I think he, Jimmy Page is and was one of the most creative rock guitar players of all time. Because not only uh, did he have this sophisticated songwriting, you know, but it was this whole creative process. Like the studio was like um, how you would approach, you know, painting or something. Like they used a lot of things for atmosphere. Uh, starting with the Beatles that would kind of build on stuff and make these incredible pieces of music. And it doesn't hurt that Led Zeppelin, each individual, is an incredible player. John Paul Jones is a highly underrated, although a very much beloved bass player, keyboard player, musician. He just, I sometimes marvel at how perfect some of the bass playing is, and I've said this before. But um, So I think Jimmy Page, you know, people say that uh, or I've heard through my whole time of liking him, talking about his sloppiness. And I'm like, N I mean, I don't know. I've heard a lot of amazingly perfect guitar players, and I wouldn't listen to 10 seconds of their music. And um, I definitely see the place for an incredible guitar playing that's super clean and articulated. But I'm just saying, like, for me, as a musician first, almost, and a guitar player second... I just want to hear great pieces of music, whether it's, you know, a jazz quartet, rock band, metal, progressive rock, whatever you, however you want to put it. But um, as far as a guitar player, I think he's unparalleled in his creativity on these records, you know, Led Zeppelin, uh, starting with number three, 
the first two, they're semi-derivative, but still, you know, really important records for sure. So uh, I just think Jimmy Page is, you know, not someone that influenced me, but as a listener, as a music lover, yeah, I mean, I've never been so immersed in records way more for me than like Pink Floyd, let's say. I'm, I'm trying to think of equivalents as far as popularity and record sales. And I, I like Pink Floyd quite a bit, and I think that band's incredible too. Uh, they are another band, I guess I said, if one of those components, meaning one of the players wasn't there, you wouldn't have Pink Floyd. You'd have something else. It might be good, but it wouldn't be Pink Floyd, and it wouldn't be as great. So... Um, I might have to do Pink Floyd, but I, to be honest, I don't think I own any of their CDs. And I thought the whole premise for this was just to do what I own. So I've kind of droned on too far, but please mention your favorite uh, Led Zeppelin record or what you think of Jimmy Page or what you think of John Paul Jones or anything. And I'd really, really appreciate that. Uh, one of the most iconic rock bands of all time. And... Uh, at the end of this series, as I kind of plow through these, what I'm going to do is probably single out records and do videos of one record from a ton of different people that were really important to me. So uh, physical graffiti would fit into that. So I am Brian. Thanks for watching and come back, please.